Starting off the news this week, a study published in the monthly notices of the Royal Astronomical Society has revealed that a massive star has just disappeared. Researchers don't really know why it has disappeared, with one theory being that it has been obstructed by interstellar dust. As the star is 75 million light years away, that is certainly a possibility. But another, perhaps more exciting theory is that the star, which was considered to be at the end of its life, collapsed into a black hole. If this is indeed true, then it would be the first object ever observed of its size to collapse into a black hole without exploding into a supernova first. While this is considered a rare event, it is not considered impossible. In 2025, the European Southern Observatory is expected to bring the aptly named Extremely Large Telescope to full operation, which should be capable of detecting this star if it is indeed still around. Up next is a recent study that has looked at the relative effects of the asteroid impact and Deccan volcanism to see how much they contributed to the end Cretaceous mass extinction event. Combining the fossil occurrence data with paleoclimate and habitat suitability models, researchers discovered that the asteroid impact would have triggered a long, cold winter that suppressed potential non-avian dinosaur habitats around the world, whereas the long-term effects of the Deccan volcanism, which would have caused CO2-induced warming, actually led to an increase in habitat suitability and potentially lessen the severity of the extinction overall. Additionally, even the short-term effects of aerosol cooling from the volcanism would have still allowed equatorial habitability, meaning, according to this research, it was the asteroid impact, not volcanism, that had the greatest impact on the extinction of non-avian dinosaurs. And now over to Ben and his cat. Thanks, Doc. Also this week is the publication of a paper that has seemingly changed how we perceive one of prehistory's most interesting animals, Thylacosmilus the so-called saber-toothed marsupial. This research has used finite element analysis and 3D dental microware texture analysis to see just how similar the skull of Thylacosmilus is to that of other saber-toothed mammals such as Smilodon, discovering that they are constructed in very different ways and that Thylacosmilus was likely not dispatching prey with its canines. Instead of this animal being a marsupial analogy of the saber-toothed cat, it would appear that Thylacosmilus actually had a very unique ecology among mammals and the paleontologists even speculate that it may have specialised on feeding on the internal organs of already deceased animals, using its long canines to open up carcasses instead of crushing bones with them. And there's more prehistoric metatherian news next, as this week also saw the publication of a paper describing a new family of marsupials. Based on a partial cranium and skeleton that comes from the late Oligocene of South Australia, this new taxon has been found to belong to the Vombatiformes clade, which also includes wombats and koalas, and has been named Mucupirna nambensis, with the new family Mucupirnidae being created for it. The marsupial appears to be intermediate between an older extinct family and modern wombats, and was about five times larger than today's wombats. It's a fascinating discovery that has allowed more to be discovered about Vombatiformes' diversity and evolution at this time. Back to Doug in the studio. Oh, I've got something for you, by the way. What? Oh, yes, right. I'll be over next week. Anyway, that's it for this week's 7 Days of Science. I really hope you enjoyed it, and as always, we'll see you on Sunday.